Bet First Man 2 now, live on Indiegogo. You can draw Marvel characters. Dun, 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 dun. By Dan Jurgens. Now, the cover of this is drawn by Brandon Peterson. But Dan Jurgens did all the uh, inside art. This is a beginner book. I mean, if you're looking to, uh, to uh, really want to learn how to draw stuff comic book way, of course, I always recommend Drawing Dynamic Comics by uh, a guy named Andy Smith. You can still get it. Uh, check Amazon. Or, uh, of course, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. This is more for kids, uh, but it's a cool book. I like Dan Jurgen's art. It shows his underdrawing and construction, so uh, let's go through it. And if you want to ink, you can always... Uh, uh, scan in some of these pencil drawings that Dan did. Uh, Dan's a great guy to learn to ink over because his pencils are tight, but they still need interpretation. This book came out in 2006. Cool shot of Captain America there. Uh, Dan has a very uh, uh, classic uh, drawing style. So, you know, nice Dave Finch piece. So we go in, you can see the table of contents right here. Another Dave Finch piece. Love Dave's work. Got all the Avengers he did. So, you know, pencil drawing. So he talks some about uh, pencils and stuff. Of course, tools of the trade. Different types of pencil leads. Things like that. Rough paper, smooth paper. I mean, that doesn't really show much of a difference between the paper, but I get why it's there. Um, talks about basic shapes. It's a good introductory book. Vehicles, you know, nice design there for a Quinjet type of ship. And then uh, the figure. So, of course, you know, classic stick figure. We all learn that stuff. People go, oh, I can't even draw a stick figure. Well, then you should probably not even be able to, to hold a pencil because everybody I know can. Uh, I love this shot of Cyclops here. So this is really basic. I mean, you need to know more than this. This book, like I said, is very rudimentary, just put tracing paper over it, trace stuff off, try and learn the basic shapes. But this is really cool to me. Uh, you can tell Dan has kind of a Neil Adams vibe going on. Dan started in drawing comics in the early 80s. Uh, this, though, if you want to learn how to ink, scan this in, slap some ink on it. You know, it's very tight, but there's still a lot of room for interpretation. Dan's a guy I'd love to see do a drawing of First Man. Uh, the male figure, and then like I said, there's tracing paper stuff, so you can see, uh, I mean, Dan pretty much traced off How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, it looks like, with this. No, I take it back, because in How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, uh, John Buscema does eight heads, and this is nine. So, uh, it is Dan's take, so that's cool. But then, you know, you can see over top just how the stick figure kind of works into it, so I thought that's pretty cool. And he talks about the ladies, the female figure. Same thing, the tracing paper. Nine heads high. Pretty nice uh, hourglass figure there for the lady. It goes into some anatomy, of course. It's basic anatomy, but you get the gist. This looks like the Silver Surfer. Talks about shading. Here's that nice shot of Wolverine from one of the opening pages. Be fun to, uh, this is, of course, this is great, actually, because this shows this side. This is full pencils. The rendering's done. The blacks are spotted. But then this side is what breakdowns look like. So if somebody's like, what's the difference between breakdowns and full pencils? Here you go. Breakdowns are more just the outlines of a figure, and full pencils show all the rendering and such. Hulk smash. Nice movement here. Unusual shape. So, you know, he's got the thing going on. Start with a, uh, even if you start with the stick figure, wider shoulders, thicker joints, put the basic shapes over it. And he's talking about action. So here's a nice little, uh, almost animation of Kurt jumping here. 
these are what you would call in-betweens. And then an animator would go in and draw the subtleties between each of these poses for actual animation. It's nice little action poses here. Talking about twisting and stuff, this is very cool. Right there. Almost looks Gil Kanish the way he has the abs, because that's kind of how Gil does abs. I wonder if he looked at Gil for that. Perspective, basic one, two, three point. So it goes into a little bit. You can see basic shapes here of the buildings, and then you go in after you do the basic shapes and add the details and such. Uh, Captain America in perspective, love that. I think that's really cool. God, if I had lots of time, I could just slap some ink. Then here we go. Uh, this is a Jimmy Chung drawing. And he put the basics over top of it so you can kind of see how the basics fit in with the tracing paper. That's cool. Perspective work on figures. Foreshortening. He goes into a little bit of foreshortening. One way to do foreshortening, you can draw a side view of your figure. And you can project everything over, not... It wouldn't work for this figure here, but you could take the side view, project everything over uh, with horizontal lines, parallel lines, and then kind of hard to explain. I'm not doing a great job. Bern Hogarth really shows it well in one of his books. I'm better at showing than telling, but basically side view, turn it a little bit more, turn it a little bit more, and then here we have it. Real foreshortening. I'd love to see Scott Williams take a crack at Ink and Dan Jurgens. I think that would be very cool. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. So you can see there's the pencils to a Spider-Man pose. These are kind of the basic shapes on top of it. This is very good for visualization. Get your mind's eye. Because in my mind's eye, when I draw, I see things like this. And then, of course... I take them to the finish level, but you got to do stuff like this first to get to this finish level. A battle. Uh, I'm not quite sure who drew that, but it was still cool to see uh, Dan throw down some, some of the basics over top right here. There you go. Oh, it's a two page spread battle. That's what we're looking at. So see, you can lift this up and you see the basic shapes. This is what I really harp on. I say it a lot and people probably get sick of it. I know kids wanting to learn how to draw are like, but I want to draw the cool anatomy and stuff. You got to learn these basics. Learn these basics and then drawing this stuff is easier. You know, basics. So this is a very, very good to see. The head. Drawing the head goes into the skull and some of the musculature. Turning of the head. Pretty cool. Talking about drawing the male head. Goes into some on the nose, the features and stuff. Uh, I appreciate how they did the book with this uh, uh, type of spine so you can lay it flat. The spiral spine or whatever, so you can lay it nice and flat. That's very helpful. Female features here. He goes into dramatic lighting. So this is very cool. For reference, hands, expressive hands. Always got to do that. Look at that Thor holding the hammer. They should reprint this book. Because I don't think it's in print anymore. So you can probably get it pretty cheap. Even talking about feet, look at this. Cool Submariner pose here. Look, want to know how to draw footprints? There you go. Clothing. Got to have regular people wearing clothes. It's basic, but you get the idea. Styles and fashion. Here's a cool shot of Magneto. You see stick figure more basic drawing finish of course there's always the villains monsters i mean to me the hulk 
I mean, yeah, he's a monster, but he's just a big guy. So I'm not quite sure I would have put him in this category. Now this, the lizard, sure. Of course, the lizard's a monster. Different features for monsters. Exciting extras. Yeah, it just shows what, I mean, it just shows weapons. Once again, it goes back to basic shapes for drawing this stuff. You can see it here. You know, you see this finish. You're like, man, how do you even draw that? Well, you start with the basic shapes. You see it in perspective. You start with the basic shapes, uh, add some details, cut some stuff in, and then boom, you've got the final. And then this is just getting into drawing different characters. So this is what I think is really cool. Uh, this doesn't line up exactly. Probably have to, no, it doesn't. But you can see, now Dan's been doing this for a long time. So that's his basics. Uh, for beginners, you're gonna do more underdrawing than that before you get to the finish. But once again, it's very cool to see the underdrawing and then the finished pencils. And then, oh, look at that. Even gets into the inks. Uh, I don't know who did the inks, but it's okay. Here we get a little into inking and coloring. So they try to touch on everything. They show some inking tools. Of course, I use real brushes still. I use some of these pens as well. I kind of use a little bit of everything. Different types of uh, textures, making marks. Correction fluid, of course, or we call it whiteout. And then inking effects. You know, this book tries to touch on everything. And then it shows inking styles. So this is light inking. This is almost like a coloring book, which 30, 40 years ago in comics, this would never fly because of flat color. Uh, but now you can do that and you can get a really good color to work that up. This is... Uh, more minimal type of inking and then this is i wouldn't call it heavy i would just call this more classical inking where blacks are spotted and stuff this would work fine with flat color these two would definitely need more uh more rendered color uh equipment for coloring most of the coloring is done digitally these days uh i'm just skimming through i don't think they say who this guy is uh, it's probably somebody I know, and I just don't know what they look like. Of course, watercolor, stuff like that. Color basics. Here's a nice color wheel. Cool colors, hot colors, moody, mix of both. Fire and ice. Comic color. This is uh, the Brandon Peterson art from the cover. So this is pretty cool. You see, and it even gives Brandon credit, you see his layout. Of course, there's more to this. He didn't just start with this. Uh, every artist starts with a stage before this. I wish they would show, which is more loose, scribbly, gestural. Then they go to this. Then they tighten the pencils, uh, ink the drawing. And then uh, I wish they would show kind of like the flats and stuff before the finished color. But they do go into old color which is flat compared to new which is uh rendered more and of course alex ross doing his gouache painting then it's like all right let's draw wolverine there's the basic of the under drawing uh there's the pencils to it oh looks like we got another one that has ink and color or just ink i should say so here you go more graphic type of lighting right there and then it goes into creating a comic. I think this is very cool. These are marker roughs that Dan did for his layout from the script. Once again, there was probably loose pencil underneath both of these. And then he took a marker and tightened it up some. And then he might go from this, blow it up, and then trace it off on a light box. Initial layout. Let's see if they show all this stuff. Talking about shot, shots and angles, establishing shot, medium, close up, uh, up shot, down shot, things like that. Talking about composition and whatnot. I had the pleasure of actually inking Dan Jurgens on four issues of Legion. Actually, I did finishes over his breakdowns. I'll have to show those one day. So here's what a typical script looks like. This is a full script where you have panel one, 
what's happening, dialogue two, three, four. So this is not a plot. You've got his thumbnails. Once again, I believe he probably did pencils, real loose pencils first, then took a marker and did the inking over top of these. And then he's like, all right, final layout. So he probably takes this and uh, blows it up to 11 by 17 and then traces it off for uh, the, the pencils. So this is pretty cool. Uh, use the marker layout if, as a guide. Like I said, if you have a light table, put your page over the marker layout, tighten up the pencils. Now, I, I'm guessing he inked this himself. I wish they would have shown the full pencils, uh, but Dan probably inked this himself, so he probably didn't have to pencil any tighter, but it's cool to be able to lay this over top and see the after and then before. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. The end. Resources. They touch on some books uh, to get comics, website, other, and then of course, uh, the index. Oh, and then if you want to do some lettering, I mean, this is very uh, simple. You've got templates for uh, different size word balloons and stuff, even though they didn't really touch on lettering. So there's that book. You can draw Marvel characters. Pretty sure it's still available. You can probably still get it. So uh, if you like this, check it out. Please subscribe to my channel as I like doing these type of videos for you guys to show you different books I have in my collection. I hope they're helpful. Bye-bye. Luke Henry, after kicking Monarch's ass to the depths of space, is back on Earth. And now he's looking to save the world from the Fourth World Foundation. Sure, he had help from Penumbra before, but she's not helping him this time. He's got to face it on his own. He's coming for a villain known as Adonis. He'll do it. You'll be there. Back it now. First Man 2. Learning Curve.